Coming up on the scene at 10, a North Nashville apartment fire takes a tragic toll. Opinions differ on whether former Governor Blanton deserved the time he spent in federal prison. And it seems there will be a contest above the field on Super Bowl Sunday. Stay with us. The news is next. Hello, I'm Carl Weathers. Okay, I'm Apollo Creed, the guy rocket. Get to know me better on Saturday Night Live with my special guest, Robbie Robertson. You know, from the band. Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, Chichi Rodriguez, and Sam Sneed. The Senior Skins, this weekend on NBC. At Rivergate Toyota, you'll find almost 700 vehicles on over 15 acres, and we want your trade-in now. Just push it, pull it, or drag it in, drive it in, and we'll give you at least $2,000 or the full NADA retail price as your trade-in allowance on any new Toyota or our huge selection of used vehicles, and the choice is yours. That means $2,000 for a junker, but if you've got a drivable trade, a nice car, or a clean pup, you'll get not just top dollar, but the deal of a lifetime at Rivergate Toyota. After 50 years, our dreams have come true. Whether you're headed for New Orleans, New Hampshire, or New Delhi, there are new senior travel opportunities that can help you on your way. That's right. Along with discount fares, many airlines now offer older Americans breaks on hotels, rental cars, even some cruises. You've earned your wings. Why not use them? Senior Choices from WSMV for the family. WSMB, Nashville. From Channel 4 News, this is The Scene at 10 with Jeff McAtee, Bill Hall, and Rudy Kalis. Good evening. A North Nashville apartment fire tonight killed a four-year-old boy and sent three other people to area hospitals. Firemen say the smoke was so thick they didn't find the four-year-old until a second search of the burning complex. Gordon Street reports. A lot of people were inside the Trinity Hills Village apartment complex when the fire began. Most were lucky and got out. I came down the steps. By the time I got down here, it seemed like the roof, the whole roof was on fire. Witnesses say the fire spread quickly. By the time the first fireman arrived, it had already engulfed much of the top floor. When he checked on the scene, the whole upstairs level was on fire with fire coming out of both the windows to the right and to the left of the stairs going to the second floor. So the, those two apartments up there were pretty well involved. Firemen searched the building once when they first got there, but didn't find anyone. Then someone came up to say one person was missing, a child, and firemen went back into the fire and smoke again. We'd already did a first a primary search. Uh, it searched every apartment, every room up there uh, on the primary search. On the secondary search, we were able to find a young boy up there. And it's, it's easy to do sometime in the smoke, because some, they said the smoke was so heavy, they could barely see the hand in front of their face. The four-year-old boy was taken to Vanderbilt Hospital, where officials say he died. His two-year-old brother was also injured, burned, and remains in critical condition. Another child was taken to General Hospital with first and second degree burns, and one woman was injured when she pushed open this second story window and jumped to escape the blaze. The lady jumped from the second floor up there on the back side, uh, did have probably a broken leg or a broken ankle. West says those residents who did escape uninjured cannot go home. The apartments were heavily damaged. Those on the upper floor gutted. Gordon Street, Channel 4 News. An Amtrak passenger pa a train rather, doing 90 miles an hour headed down a section of closed track this morning in Pennsylvania. All 10 cars derailed, causing multiple injuries. And investigators looking for answers are now searching for a railroad employee who fled the scene. Robert Hager reports. It was just after midnight when the Amtrak train slammed into a railroad work car. The front locomotive tumbled down a bank. Baggage cars tipped over. Passenger cars derailed but stayed upright. 24 people were injured, but none seriously. Shaken passengers were brought by bus to Philadelphia, where another train took them on. And the earth began to shake, and the <laughs> car began to jump, and it was a terrifying experience. But I was afraid it was going to flip over. That was the only problem. Suddenly there was a grinding, crunching noise, and uh, 
I was at the lower berth and I got tossed out. The accident happened on the main Washington to New York line, south of Philadelphia in Chester, Pennsylvania. There are four tracks at that point. Numbers two and one are for northbound trains. The work car was one like this, a ballast adjuster, which smooths the roadbed. It had moved onto track two, two hours before the accident. And a switchman on duty at the Marcus Hook Tower says he threw the switch so trains would be diverted away from the work car. But a new switchman replaced him an hour before the accident, and somehow the switch was turned back. So the passenger train was directed right into the work car, shoving it a mile down the track until it jammed against a bridge abutment and cars went flying. Late today, startling information from the federal government official who oversees railroads, John Riley. Now, the man who was operating the signal that sent the Amtrak train onto the wrong track fled the property immediately after the accident, and we've been looking for him for the last 16 or 17 hours. And the problem with that is that he fled the property before anyone could get a statement from him, to get a drug test from him, to get an alcohol test from him. And now, 16 or 17 hours later, I'm not sure how useful all those tests are going to be. In fact, investigators say at this point, an alcohol test would be absolutely meaningless and a drug test of very limited value. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. Representatives of Nicaragua's Sandinista government and the Contra rebels met again today in Costa Rica, even though neither side is optimistic that the talks will do much good. There is a fundamental disagreement over what should be discussed. The Sandinistas want to limit the talks to the mechanics of a ceasefire. But the Contras want to talk about the causes of the war. The talks are scheduled to, to, to conclude tonight. Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega stayed away from the peace talks today. He spent the morning instead with Pope John Paul. The Pope received him with the usual diplomatic honors, but people who were close by said the Pope's manner was very cool. Ortega reportedly asked the Pope to encourage Nicaragua's peace process. Relations between Nicaragua and the Vatican are strained because the Pope is not very happy with Ortega's handling of human rights or the fact that he has priests serving in his government. That's a violation of church law. Israeli Prime Minister Shamir says that he is prepared to let Jordan share in the policing of the West Bank. His decision came as he submitted a plan to the United States for limited Palestinian self-rule. But even as Shamir made the announcement, there were more violent clashes between Israeli troops and West Bank Palestinians. Tear gas grenades were fired to disperse stone-throwing demonstrators. Later, Palestinians staged a protest march at a mosque. I've always used quality tools, and GMC Truck has been building quality for over 75 years. This new Sierra has state-of-the-art equipment and performance, plus great value. With popular options, it's priced over $300 less than last year's full-size pickup. And now, get $500 cash back. Your price could be just $99.94. It's the Celebration Cash In. GMC Truck. It's quality and value you can work with. It's not just a truck anymore. The Kroger cost cutter scissors stand for something very special. They're a symbol of our commitment to save you more every day. So when you see our cost cutter scissors throughout the store, that's your sign for extra low prices on hundreds of your favorite products. Kroger cuts your costs every week in every department through the buying power of over a thousand stores. We buy more, so you save more, right where it really counts. See the difference cost cutters make. Go Krogering. The nation's leading ski resort is not just for experienced skiers. Vail, Colorado especially welcomes those who want to learn and enjoy a wonderful winter vacation at the same time. Fun for the children, good times for grown-ups, the best for all at a mountain and ski school renowned the world over. Bring your family, bring your friends. The winter vacation you've dreamed about is Vail, Colorado. It's the sky's the limit sale at Team Toyota in Gallatin. Save $2,500 on new Toyotas. Take advantage of the great savings at Team Toyota in Gallatin. His attorney says former Governor Ray Blanton did not deserve to spend nearly two years in prison. Yesterday, a federal judge overturned nine out of 11 convictions against Blanton. But a former, former prosecutor says the judge's ruling still leaves Blanton guilty of the most serious counts. Terry Dorsey reports. What hurt me worst of all was going to prison in the country I love. The country sending me to prison for something I didn't do. 
two years ago, Ray Blanton's comments during one of his first interviews as a newly released convict could have drawn skepticism. But yesterday, a federal judge overturned all of the mail fraud convictions against Blanton. The Supreme Court held that, uh, that uh, the mail fraud statutes he was convicted of violating as, as, uh, as, as, as criminal conduct never criminal conduct from the word go. Blanton's attorney, John McClellan, says the Supreme Court ruled all of the mail fraud charges were never a crime, but a former Blanton prosecutor says Judge Brown's decision could be reversed. If they didn't defraud somebody and get a lot of money, then you can't prosecute them under the mail fraud statute. That's the gist of this new decision. So a lot of public officials have been prosecuted under the mail fraud statute for the languages depriving the public of the good and loyal services uh, that they were entitled to. And that was the theory of mail fraud used against um, the defendants in this case. Aleda Arthur says the basis of the 1981 case against Blanton was that the former governor gave liquor licenses to his political friends. The Hobbs Act public corruption count still stands. Uh, and the c conspiracy count. So he still stands convicted of those two uh, important crimes, and they, in my view, very much justify any time that he has served in prison. Blanton completed his nearly two-year prison term in May of 1986. He was visiting his old stomping grounds on Capitol Hill within a month of his freedom. Blanton was unavailable for comment today, but he's made it clear earlier that he wants to overturn all of his convictions. Terry Dorsey, Channel 4 News. Attorney General Edwin Meese is fighting newspaper reports that he knew about a bribery scheme involving a pipeline in Iraq. Robert Wallach told a newspaper reporter that Meese was aware of plans to bribe a high-ranking Israeli official in exchange for help in building the Iraq pipeline. The bribe and pipeline never became reality. But the dilemma is that if Meese knew about a, a planned bribe as Attorney General, he should have reported it. A special prosecutor investigating Meese on other matters confirms the bribe investigation. We have been investigating this matter for some time and are going to continue to investigate it, and we hope to wrap it up at least within the next three or four weeks. Meese is also being investigated for his role in the Iran-Contra affair and the Lynn Nofziger case. Robert Wallach was indicted last month for his involvement with WedTech. An AIDS policy has been adopted by Tennessee's Board of Education. The policy allows children or school officials with the disease or those who test positive for the virus to remain in school. The policy also does not require AIDS victims to notify school officials. And local school systems must develop an AIDS plan based on the state board's approved guidelines. Some say the policy should be more specific, but the executive director of the Tennessee Board of Education says the policy has room for variables. Let's ask local boards to create their own policies on confidentiality. Let's see how it works. There are different conditions, different parts of the state. If a problem develops, then we may need to be more prescriptive, but we'd rather not. Each school system has until September 1st to file an AIDS plan with the Department of Education. The Education Department is also mulling over a new system of testing for Tennessee schools. Right now, the state uses different tests on alternating years with specific subjects covered in each test. Well, this new plan would combine the testing, giving the same test each year, but with a broader base of subject matter. Tom Cannon helped in evaluating the testing program. He says the new method will provide students with more to study and learn. It will eliminate, at least, uh, an easy way for a teacher to teach to the test. It will, in essence, say to teachers, this area will be covered on the test rather than point out which parts of it are going to be covered. If the new testing is adopted, it should go into effect in the spring of 1990. There's still more to come in this newscast. Rudy Kalis tells us that some gators have slithered into town. And after sports, Mike Bohan will tell us about some aerial combat expected to take place in the sky over Sunday's Super Bowl.
It's the GMC Truck Celebration Cash-In, so cash in on value. Right now, get $500 cash back on select new GMC trucks, Sierras, S15 Jimmys, S15 pickups, even full-size vans. And ask about option value packages on the same GMC trucks. Save a total of up to $2,400 on a GMC S15 extended cab pickup. It's the GMC Truck Celebration Cash-In. See your Central Tennessee GMC truck dealers today. White Bluff GMC, White Bluff, Parks GMC, Columbia, Moore GMC, Gallatin, Cunningham Motors, Lebanon, and Earl Dunn GMC, Madison. Southeastern Conference Basketball coming your way this Saturday. The Florida Gators beat the Vanderbilt Commodores. Freshman sensation Livingston Chapman works hard on the inside for the Gators. But in this game, Coach Newton has an inside weapon of his own. Commodore scoring leader Will Perdue. It's SEC Basketball, Florida versus Vanderbilt. Saturday at 3 brought to you by Today Chevrolet and Metropolitan Federal. The Philippine government has spent many months tracking down extravagant items bought by deposed President Ferdinand Marcos and his wife Imelda. Oh, many of those purchases are now in New York on the auction block. Jeff Michaels reports. A condominium high above New York's Fifth Avenue, once home to riches bought by Imelda Marcos. And yet, this was never really a home. The possessions inside were rarely even seen by the Marcoses. But now, just ten blocks from here, those pieces enjoy celebrity status. Oh, look at that show. Curiosity brings most of them to the famous Christie's auction house. Buy it, they wouldn't know where to put most of it. I guess there's something sick, sick and intriguing about it, I think. It's not necessarily for my lifestyle, but it intrigues me to see what she would be interested in having in her possessions. The room is filled with rare pieces. The cheap ones will go for $2,000. 30,000 may buy this 19th century hand-painted dinner service. A tree of jade. Anyone's guess what this will fetch. Imelda purchased nearly all of it at once, but the critics say she never appreciated what her money bought. The Philippine government doesn't appreciate any of it. The people in the Philippines consider this as an immoral uh, thing, and it's a crime, a major crime that's been committed against the Filipino people. Do you, do you, pers do you personally see any beauty in this? No, frankly, I don't. We want to uh, get as much as possible precisely to be able to help us. Philippine Ambassador Emmanuel Palais keeps track of a government committee that has already searched out over $2 billion worth of Marcos goods. Now, the money from this auction will join that wealth. It once fed a president's ego, Ambassador Palais says. Now it will feed the people. This money is going to be used to buy the big landed estates, which will be subdivided and then resold at cost to the small people, the small far farmers of the Philippines. In New York, Jeff Michael for NBC News. Well, they didn't show it there, but I heard that they had a fishing rod there that belonged mm -hmm. to uh, President Marcos. Yeah. You could have picked that up for a song, Bill. Well, maybe not so much that, Jeff, but if they are missing any other valuables, I know where they can find them. Where? In the apartment of Jennifer Walsh, our producer. <laughs> Okay, Jennifer, I'm in trouble now. I'll call her and <laughs> tell her to be on the lookout. <laughs> well, I better go to work. Right. Windy, warm spring-like weekend. Our low this morning, 34. Our high today, 62. And the city's air quality remaining good today. No precipitation, of course, for the last 24 hours. Monthly and yearly total staying at that uh, 3.70 inches. And we're now 51 hundredths of an inch below normal. Right now we have uh, partly cloudy skies, 51 degrees. Southerly wind at 13. The pressure steady and relative humidity at 41%. Temperatures at our weather bank stations are in the upper 40s to lower and, uh, well, we'll stick with lower 50s, no mid 50s, 52 at Dixon and Jackson for our warmer readings right now. Skies, as we said, are on the, uh, clouds are on the increase over the uh, Ohio and uh, Tennessee valleys. Gulf of Mexico virtually wide open. We'll have a good, strong southerly flow up out of the Gulf Coast and areas of the southeast throughout uh, the day tomorrow due in part to an area of high pressure that's off the Atlantic seaboard, an area of low pressure that's over the central plain states. They are contributing to that strong southerly flow, and that strong southerly flow will likely produce a shower or two at least late in the day on Sunday. Meanwhile, the only significant precipitation to look at right now, it's over the western United States, it of course is rain. In portions of Idaho, the chimney of Idaho, they had some slippery roads around Pocatello earlier today, as we told you earlier also. Some snow showers also in a and uh, occurring in the Tahoe area and also the uh, Siskiyous and the Cascades out west, snow showers over southwestern Canada. Nothing in the way of precipitation east of the Mississippi to report tonight. Our temperatures nationally, as you can see, not too bad for January evening. The warmer readings are, of course, across the 
southern tier of states. And, uh, well, let's see, we can't, I don't see one, but one reading under 32 right now, and that's up at uh, Portland in Maine. The nation's recorded low temperature this morning was 24 below zero, and that was in Holton, Maine. McAllen, Texas went to 80 degrees today. Weather east of the Mississippi today and tonight, for the most part, just fair to partly cloudy and on the mile. New England, however, is on the cold side tonight. You saw that one or single digits in northern Maine. And as we said, some snow advisories posted for areas of the Pacific Northwest, but an uneventful night weather-wise over most of the entire contiguous 48 states. For tomorrow, looking at a partly cloudy, somewhat windy, but uh, still warm day tomorrow and seasonably warm. Cold front will have moved into the Central Plain states, uh, but not quite active. We are still watching the Canadian front in the vicinity of the jet stream along the U.S.-Canadian border, and that uh, shows signs of dipping southward by the middle of next week. Temperatures tomorrow will be coldest along the U.S.-Canadian border and uh, above normal over portions of the Ohio and Tennessee Valley, but we've heard no complaints about that. For Sunday, we have scattered showers posted, but the latest computer models indicate that the most likely time for rain beginning on Sunday won't be coming until after 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're still looking at, as of right now, less than a tenth of an inch of rain on Sunday afternoon. Sunday night, it could become more numerous, the showers could become more numerous, and they should last through Monday and on into Tuesday, moving as far eastward as the Atlantic seaboard. Our local weather radar right now, of course, nothing in the way of precipitation, and a mile 53 degrees here on the hill. Forecast tonight, partly cloudy mile, southwesterly wind 15, low 45. For tomorrow, partly cloudy, windy warm, high 68, southerly wind 20 with gusts up to 30, Jeff, and a low of 50 by Sunday morning. Five-day forecast, we'll call it partly cloudy on Sunday with a chance of rain now Sunday afternoon, late and Sunday night through Tuesday, partly cloudy Wednesday. Morning lows from 50 uh, Sunday morning down to 28 Wednesday morning, so it's a return to winter. Daytime highs from uh, 68 tomorrow to about 40 on Wednesday. Now, our selected city for tomorrow, if you're going to be traveling to the east, uh, go, go through Guntown, Tennessee, up there in Hawkins County. It'll be partly cloudy and windy in a high of 65 in Guntown, Tennessee. Just up, just up the road from Bullet, I suppose. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> little little uh, windy for you to go fishing tomorrow, though. And... Yep, so that means honeydews. I was going to say, a lot yep. of work around the yard, though, Bill. I'll lie and get out of those, though. <laughs> All right, okay. thank you. Well, newspeople are supposed to stay objective, but sometimes it's tough for us not to get involved in the stories we cover. For example, this afternoon in Tampa, Florida, a news crew in a helicopter owned by station WXFL spotted an overturned boat with two men clinging to it. The news crew threw the men a lifeline and towed them ashore. Neither man was seriously injured, and both refused a trip to the hospital after their dip in the chilly water. Actor Sean Penn is making news tonight for clobbering someone, again. This time, though, it's the clobberee who's under arrest, not the actor. Seems that Sean and wife Madonna came home from the grocery store last week and found several trespassers at their Malibu house. Sean got into a scuffle with the oldest of the three prowlers and hit him with a bottle of salad dressing. 24-year-old Richard Barcello was charged with assault. His teenage companions were charged with trespassing and stealing mail. No word on whether the salad dressing was Paul Newman's Italian. The great rebates of 88 have just gotten bigger at your Ford dealer. But only for a limited time. Get a $500 rebate on Ford Bronco 2, coming off its best sales year ever. Add a factory option package and save over $2,400. Or get a $500 rebate on Ford Aerostar, the number one selling nameplate in America. Then save over $1,300 when you add an option package. But it all ends soon. The great rebates of 88. Get them where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. No, we're not safe. Because my, right now, my guys are spread so thin. As the old joke goes, you know, when 10,000 people are leaving a burning building, here comes these four firemen run up, we're going to save the sucker. The proud, the few. The Metro Fire Department. Today, manpower is so low, it can't keep up with Metro fires. What does the firefighter shortage mean to you? Watch A Burning Need, starting Tuesday on The Scene at 10. Well, it's Super Bowl weekend. Everybody's like this, but huh. we're not going to talk about that right oh, now. Oh, no, <laughs> because that, that's on Sunday. But first right. of all, tomorrow, for folks in this area, they want to watch a pretty good basketball game. Yeah, we got a showdown locally here. You bet. Combatants yeah. are in town. Norm Sloan and his Florida Gators arrived in Nashville tonight. Tomorrow afternoon, they will face a confident Vanderbilt team and a boisterous crowd at Memorial Gym in a battle for the top spot in the SEC. The Gators are 6-1 and one in conference play and road tested. They've won at Kentucky and at Tennessee. They don't get intimidated on the road, and they are coming off a big win over LSU. 
Vanderbilt, on the other hand, is 5-3 and, and is sky high after the victory over Kentucky and has to deal with the question of keeping that intensity. Gator coach Norm Sloan figures the odds are in the Commodore's favor. If you have trouble getting your ball club up uh, for a game that uh, is, is with one of the contenders, your ball club's not really serious about trying to be a conference champion. So I don't think either one of us are going to have any trouble with that. So I think with the home court advantage and with the, giving them edge in the uh, perimeter game, and they also have, I think, the best center, why uh, I think that they're, we're going into this game an underdog. Interesting comment, a little psychology there. Florida 6-1, and one, Vanderbilt 5-3. and three. That ball game at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and you'll be able to see it right here on Channel 4. And Tennessee, with a 4-3 record, will play at Alabama. A must-win situation, I would think. Alabama not doing well, and Tennessee needing the victory. Auburn it will be playing at Ole Miss. And Mississippi State will be on the road playing in Baton Rouge against LSU. College basketball this evening, the Austin P. Governors defeated Berry College 100-68. to That ball game played in Clarksville. Austin P. is 9-8, 4-1 in conference play. Barry Sumter led him with 21 points. Now some Super Bowl notes. Redskins coach Joe Gibbs says that Ricky Sanders will start ahead of Art Monk at wide receiver. Monk is back from a knee injury and expected to play, but not quite ready for the starting job. In Denver, starting right guard Stefan Humphreys has a bruised thigh, but he will play on Sunday. Now for the folks battling the cold weather and winter conditions in different parts of the country, watching the Super Bowl in sunny San Diego will be a treat, and the weather there is just right. As tourists arrive, we give them this test. Is it warmer out here? Oh, my God, yes. Super Bowl sites not frequently seen. Redskin fans with sunblock 15. We watched with concern your temperature's unbearable. You summed it up best. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> While you shoveled and skidded and somehow survived, it was freezing here, too. About 65. But don't think our weather is never a pain. Historians say it once nearly rained. The highways were jammed. It was pure pandemonium. San Diegans dressed up like it was raining plutonium. And when the wind blows and knocks down some lines, back east it's routine. For us, it's headlines. But this week the weather's been generally fine. And the sun just came out, so you came at the right time. But we don't mean to gloat or to really be vicious. Consider, for instance, our terrible Christmas, when Santa and Donner and Blitzen and Prancer came down with sunstroke and the risk of skin cancer. But stay and enjoy. There's nothing to fear. It surely won't snow. I'm nice and warm here. We're proud of our city, not shy to admit it. But we hope you all came with round-trip tickets. Now, we really don't mind if you stay a while, but too many people cramp our laid-back style. See, I'm the weatherman here. I have time for this muse. In San Diego, I'm Brian Hackney for NBC News. Clever. Veteran Cincinnati Reds second baseman Ron Oster will be playing for the Nashville Sounds when the 1988 baseball season opens. He's still recuperating from serious knee damage suffered last year. He won't be eligible to return to the Reds until May 15th. And that means that former Sound second baseman Jeff Treadway should get a real shot at the starting job at second base at Cincinnati. The Celtics and the Detroit Pistons tonight in Detroit. NBA record 61,983 fans in the Silver Dome. They came to doom was it for the Boston Celtics as the Detroit Pistons just overloaded down the stretch and pulled away to an easy victory. Dennis Rodman on the stuff. The Pistons won it 125 to 108. Ooh. Chicago defeated New Jersey, Philadelphia on top of Indiana, and Dallas beat Seattle. I and think that's the first time I ever saw a weatherman do a report in sports. I like that. That, that was nice cleverly touch. written. Yeah, cleverly written. good. Yeah. So do you like the Broncos or the Redskins? Oh, I'm, I'm going to pull Redskins. I'm, Joe you? Gibbs, I think, is a clever man. Okay. Well, Dimitri will have it out with you on Monday, one way or the other. <laughs> That'll be a delight. <laughs> okay. <you know? laughs> Thanks, Rudy. We'll be right back. Yeah, we enjoy the view. You know, have been uh, spotting a few whales off the coast recently. We like flying along the beaches looking at the girls. I've always used quality tools. GMC Truck has been building quality for over 75 years. This new Sierra has increased glass area, 73% galvanized steel body, a box that will take a 4x8 size cargo load, plus great value. This year's Sierra, equipped with popular options, is priced $305 less than last year's full-size pickup. Only $10,494. GMC Truck. It's quality and value you can work with. It's not just a truck anymore. I'm David Satcher. As president of Meharry Medical College, 
I see daily the hopes, dreams, and frustrations of some of our nation's brightest young people. But the prospects of nuclear war can deter even the best from their mission. This month, Public Summit 88 gives Nashvilleans a chance to explore how our nation can work with the Soviet Union to ensure peace. Watch Channel 4 and Read the Tennessee and to find out more about Public Summit 88. Two lovers are eloping. She's still our Mallory. But now he's our Nick. Next time on Family Ties. Family Ties, tonight at 10.30. This past month, Channel 4 and the Tennessean have sponsored Public Summit 88. The subject is our future and our relations with the Soviet Union. There have been commentaries, debates, and an old-fashioned town meeting with nuclear weapons experts. Well, now it's your turn. You can send a clear message to Congress and the White House by filling out this ballot. You can get one in this Sunday's Tennessean. Your answers will remain confidential, but your opinions will be heard. And finally, you might think that there was a blimp convention in San Diego instead of just the Super Bowl. There are these giant airships now, and a fourth may be on the way. Mike Bowen has the story in tonight's Weekender. It'll be hard to ignore as it provides sky-high camera shots for Sunday's Super Bowl game, but the Goodyear blimp can count on some heavyweight competition of its own. The Fujifilm and Pepsi Slice airships will also be in the aerial advertising arena, and there's talk the Seagram's blimp may arrive in time for kickoff. The Fuji and Pepsi Slice blimps are both leased from Airship Industries, a British firm that has 12 around the world. We also won the U.S. Navy contract uh, for the Naval Airship uh, uh, program, and we're building an airship at the moment that's 12 times the size of this one. The blimps have ground crews of a dozen or more hands, and while the travel tends to get tiresome, the job does have its joy. Oh, it's really hard work, really. It's, uh... Yeah, we enjoy the view, you know, we've been uh, spotting a few whales off the coast recently, we like flying along the beaches looking at the girls, so it's a tough life. When we turned up in some of the um, towns that, you know, are way out of the main city, you just get hordes and hordes of people just turn out, and they can be troublesome, they get in the way on that, but it's good to see them come out. The blimps are designed to withstand heavy weather, but the pilots prefer not to challenge the elements if they can avoid it. The worst weather I've been in was in Germany in September. We, got, uh, we had to fly up a, a valley, and the turbulence was pretty nasty. But uh, other than that, nothing too serious. And with Sunday's San Diego forecast calling for ideal conditions, the sponsors can reasonably hope to sell a few more soft drinks, tires, and rolls of film. And that's this week's Weekender. I'm Mike Bohan. And that's this week's Scene of Ten. Thank you for being with us. Have a good weekend, and I hope your team wins on Sunday. Good night. It's the GMC Truck Celebration Cash-In, so cash in on value. Right now, get $500 cash back on select new GMC trucks, Sierras, S15 Jimmys, S15 pickups, even full-size vans. And ask about option value packages on the same GMC trucks. Save a total of up to $2,400 on a GMC S15 extended cab pickup. It's the GMC Truck Celebration Cash-In. See your Central Tennessee GMC truck dealers today. Kane GMC Franklin, Barber GMC Springfield, Wyatt Johnson GMC Clarksville, and Richard Smith GMC Murfreesboro. They were hired to play the summer. Man, what planet is this? Oh. They're all unique. I think you're really different. I can work really hard to be the same. All wild. Hi. Where's the dip? All the dips are dancing. All style. Nice pants. And all girls. Justine Bateman. Satisfaction. It's the best. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, February 12th at theaters everywhere. Sprint's is Nashville's largest selection of Pennsylvania house. Displayed in room settings priced 30 to 40 percent less than retail. Like no other store you've seen before. Saving Central American children starting Tuesday on the scene at 6.